Lake Orion said farewell to village manager Joe Young with an open house in the council chambers. The annual fundraiser known as Tommy Stock returned to Camp Agawam with three days of music and fun. The streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic for Galling Butte GMC's annual Kids and Cops charity car cruise. And the best bocce players in the world came to Orion Township for an international tournament and a chance at the $10,000 cash prize. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Callaway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Over the past two decades, the village of Lake Orion has seen at least a half dozen village managers come and go. Joanne Van Tassel, Paul Zelenak, and Dorman McCleary, to name a few. Now the village's latest hire has announced his retirement after five years on the job. On Wednesday, July 27th, the village of Lake Orion hosted an open house in the council chambers to celebrate the retirement of outgoing village manager Joe Young. Visitors enjoyed food donated by local restaurants and colleagues presented him with gifts and wished him well in his future endeavors. It's overwhelming to think that I made that much difference in those people's lives that they would feel, feel so compiled, felt to come and show their appreciation to me because I appreciate them. So like I said earlier, you get what you give. You give love and attention and concern for other people, you will get it back. And you certainly need more of that in this world. So it was very, very nice of everybody to show up. And I'm glad I made a difference. So, uh, and I'll keep doing that. Joe has uh, really spent a lot of time here, extra time servicing our community. He's been uh, uh, a hero in many ways and a teacher and uh, has done a good job for us and we wish him the best in his uh, recovery and with his retirement. In my role I've, I've had the opportunity to work with all kinds of leaders across Southeast Michigan um, and Joe is top tier. He is the, top, the best of the best. Um, cool, calm, collected and extremely, extremely intelligent. I think that's one thing that Maybe it doesn't always get, didn't always get picked up on, but Joe knew what was going on. He understood the politics of an issue. He understood the, the budget of an issue. He understood the, what the community thought of an issue. Super rare to find somebody that can put all that together and then do it, do it with a smile. Do it in a nice, uh, you know, uh, just the, the way he delivered was, was awesome. And um, I've, said it, I've said it before, I just said it just now. Um, one of the best guys I've had the privilege of working with just a kind-hearted person that cared so deeply about this community. Joe Young was hired to replace outgoing village manager Darwin McCleary in April of 2017. Young came in with more than 40 years of experience in public service, having acted as deputy mayor in Pontiac, city manager of Hazel Park, and for 12 years he served as village manager in Oxford. After five years in Lake Orion, Young is stepping down due to health concerns. He reflected on his accomplishments as village manager. Certainly the water main project, phase one and two, is the biggest, biggest one from a health and dollar standpoint. Uh, we still got two more phases, another eight million or so to go, unfortunately. And then deal with the lead lines and all that. And then we have our lift stations, which is a lot But the other big thing, when I first got here in August, that first year, the dam was failing. And MDOT had to come in and rebuild it for close to a million dollars. And we quote co-own it, but we're only responsible for operating it. So we only ended up paying 36,000 for splitting half of the engineering, which was our engineers. So I, that was a big item from the standpoint of the lake overall, because uh, if that dam had failed, we would you know, yeah. be a lot of impacts there. So those were some things I think, uh, you know, improving the operations of the police department and the public works department by getting the equipment and staff that they need to be more efficient and the administrative staff as well, you know, getting financial things in order, getting our order without any exceptions or journal entries, that's, a, that's wonderful. Um, so I think all those things helping others to make our community better. During his tenure, he helped guide the village through the COVID-19 pandemic with the downtown area emerging more vibrant and energetic than before. 
Well, certainly all the federal, state, and county aid helped the businesses, and we had strong local support to keep us going. We had a lot of marketing and promotion that has paid off. The, again, it's those little things that make a big difference. You, need, you touch one person, you're going to touch several when you get done with it. So that's been a big thing in having more activities, more uh, business involvement and support. I mean, the trolley is some goal we've had for a long time. That's amazing and brought more attention. And we certainly got more music and dining and you know entertainment in the creek and the lakes and the parks. I mean, everything's right here. So it's a great community. Joe Young will continue to live in Lake Orion and act as a consultant following his retirement. The village of Lake Orion hopes to have a replacement in place by mid-September. In the meantime, Wayne O'Neill will act as interim manager. Camp Agawam was founded in 1918 by the Boy Scouts of America. Orion Township purchased the property in 2014 and celebrated the camp's 100th anniversary in 2018. The Friends of Camp Agawam hosts an annual fundraiser to help preserve the camp and make ongoing improvements to the Fire Bowl. The annual music festival known as Tommy Stock kicked off on the evening of Friday, July 29th with a performance by Bernadette Catherine and the Lonely Days Band. They were the first of six bands to perform at the Fire Bowl on Friday and Saturday with more live music over at the Tiki Bar Tent. Oh, so we've got tons of vendors, there's merchandise for sale, we've got excellent food trucks, frozen drinks at the Tiki Bar, live music at the Tiki Bar, uh, the beach is open, it's a family friendly event so uh, mom and dad can maybe have a frozen margarita while the kids are, are in, in, uh, enjoying the lake. Tommy Stock gets its name from Tommy's Lake, which campers can access from the beach at Camp Agawam. The music festival allows the friends of Camp Agawam to make ongoing improvements to Orion Township's hidden gem. We've taken all the money that we make from Tommy Stock to do these improvements, and there's still a lot more to go. I think you saw how hard we're working just to get uh, power and stuff to do, do a show out here. So we need to upgrade the power, permanent stage with a nice roof over it so we don't have to get this, this clunky tent out here. And so there's a lot still to do that so we can utilize this uh, fire bowl a lot more often here in Lake Moran. On Sunday, the Tiki Bar area and the beach are turned over to the Real Men of Orion campaign and their annual Boobs, Tubes and Dudes event. Ticket sales, donations and sponsorships raise money for the American Cancer Society to help those battling breast cancer and their families. Uh, Real Men uh, started in Oakland County, I think it's six years now, and I, I was an inaugural um, Real Men Wear Pink ambassador and actually won that first year for fundraising and then just kind of got hooked and got involved. and. Uh, over time, we built the Real Men of Orion team because, quite frankly, there's a lot of work to do on my own, and so it's nice to bring in some guys to help. Uh, we raised a lot of money because of the community jumping in and wanting to be a part of it, and, uh, and really with everything that arises in our community, um, that when people come together pretty quickly to, to uh, help. So in this, it's become kind of a community-wide effort. We have a lot of businesses involved. We do events through October, and uh, most of our events are in October and September. Um, so it's just a great, uh, it's a great way to highlight what our community is in terms of a very giving community that always steps up and it makes it a lot easier and just makes it a lot of fun. The Real Men of Orion campaign kicks into high gear in October, which happens to be Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They already have several events planned in Lake Orion. Yeah, we're working on events now. Um, we're going to have a, a tailgate up at uh, 313, which we've done in years past, which is a blast uh, outside and back of the, the restaurant there. We do, we're going to be doing our karaoke for a cure. Um, and we've got our first one booked for October 14th, which happens to be my birthday. So we're kind of doing a, uh, we did a birthday one last year. Um, uh, so we're going to, we'll be signing up more bars and restaurants. We're starting to set that calendar, which will all be available on our, uh, our website, which is realmenoforian.com. I think we're changing it to .org this year, so uh, you might want to check that. And, uh, or on Facebook. Uh, we, we try to be real active on Facebook to let everybody know what's going on. Throughout the summer, Galling Buick GMC has been hosting charity car cruises benefiting local nonprofit organizations. After hosting their first cruise of the season at the dealership on N24, organizers ventured out into the community for the next two. On the morning of Saturday, July 16th, dozens of cruisers gathered at Friendship Park in Orion Township for the second annual car cruise benefiting Miracle Field. It was Galling Buick GMC's second cruise of the year benefiting local nonprofit organizations. Cruisers made a donation upon registering for the cruise, which goes toward the maintenance of Miracle Field. We've actually got more cars than we had last year. 
Uh, and they keep coming in slowly but surely, but all the money proceeds go to Miracle Field to help uh, finish off the field and we'll continue on supporting it whether once they meet their goal or not. So, uh, and everybody here, all the drivers are really enthused about doing a donation for them too. At 11 a.m., the first of three games got underway at Miracle Field, which was just a few feet away from the car crews. Miracle Field was opened in August of 2019 and gives those with special needs an opportunity to play sports in a barrier-free environment. Yeah, they get to actually see what their, their donations have gone to, uh, and we encourage them as well uh, to go look at them. Uh, and and it's, it's something that I think most charities aren't able to provide what the donations go to. I mean, you can tell them that they're going to this or that, but until they can actually physically see it, um, and especially these kids, uh, this is just a, a beautiful facility and it's a beautiful place to watch these kids play and they, they play their hearts out. Two weeks later, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as classic cars, hot rods, and muscle cars lined the streets of Flint, Broadway, and Front Street. The weather was perfect for this popular event, which provides plenty of photo ops in front of the village's historic buildings. We had cars here at 6.30 in the morning lined up ready to go. We weren't even set up. Uh, I'm pickle pink. We got 100 cars that at least registered, uh, probably more. And everybody's excited, everybody's come up and said, hey, this is a great venue, um, and I think people are, are gung, gung for it. And I think the fact is of that we're doing this for the police department's Cops for Kids program even, even is a better that way. But yeah, this is, this is a favorite one for me too, because of the setting. Yeah, describe the environment, the setting, the photo opportunity. Well, down here, because the, the village itself is historical, it, it's a better way for these guys if they want to take a picture of the car because, you know, they, they're in a building that's been around for a hundred years and it's just not sitting in a field, not sitting on a hot parking lot. And they can sit in the shade, they can go into the stores and shop, do things like that. So hopefully the businesses appreciate it. Hopefully the restaurants, I know we were, they did really, really well at uh, Johnny Black's this morning and thank you to them and their staff for doing the all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast and sausage. So. I, I'm, I'm totally happy with everything going on right now. The annual event acts as a fundraiser for the Lake Warren Police Department's Shop with a Hero program, which invites local children to go Christmas shopping with police officers and military personnel. Stalling has this car show in downtown Lake Orion, and it, uh, all the proceeds go towards the Lake Orion Police Association. We use the funds for Shop with a Hero, which is the opportunity for us to take kids shopping at Christmas so they can get some presents that they otherwise might not get. So it's a great event. Gulling has been a great sponsor. Uh, they, they've been with us for many years, and uh, really they just step up. It, it's usually them that come to us and, and ask you know, what they can do for us this year. Um, so it's always them initiating things, and they've, they've just been a great asset to our Lake Orion Police Association and the Shop of the Hero program. The car crews also helped raise funds for the family of Guy Higgins, a Lake Orion Reserve officer since 2017 who sadly lost his battle with cancer on July 18th. Tell me about your husband and, and what kind of person he was. That sort of thing. That's a tough one. He was an awesome guy, totally awesome guy. Uh, almost everybody here knew him. Um, I've had so many wonderful stories about him. Uh, he's just really very, he was very outgoing. So he would get to know anybody he could that was on the street. That's great. Um, what can you say about this event today and the atmosphere and helping you do this? Oh, uh, this is so awesome. I can't get over the amount of community that has come forward since we've lost him. Even before that, when he was fighting his battle with cancer, just everybody coming forward and just helping my son and I through everything has been phenomenal. You can help support the Higgins family by visiting GoFundMe.com to make a donation. Just search for Guy Higgins. And you can donate year-round to the Shop with a Hero program. Just reach out to the Lake Orion Police Department. Galling Butte GMC has one more event left on its calendar. On Saturday, September 17th, the Galling Super Cruise will take place at the dealership to raise money for the Orion Lighted Christmas Parade through donations, raffles, and food sales. Be sure to mark your calendar. Almost two decades ago, Anthony Battaglia wanted to create a place for friends and family to play bocce year-round and enjoy great food and drinks. 
In 2004, he opened Palazzo de Bacci in Orient Township. The amazing facility recently hosted an international tournament, attracting players from around the globe. ONTV's Joe Johnson was there for the opening ceremony. On the evening of Wednesday, July 20th, Palazzo de Bacci in Orient Township hosted the opening ceremony for the 2022 International Invitational Bocce Tournament. 20 players representing 10 countries were introduced to the crowd and the media in attendance, and each team was escorted by members of the Power Company Kids Club in Pontiac. Putting an event like this together, having 10 countries come from afar, safe and sound, was a task in itself, so we are thrilled they're here. We went through an invitation process. We wanted to pick the best players from afar to be here for a very fierce competition applying international rules, which is a little different than most people come here to Plaza and want to play socially. These players here are the best of the best, and they all are wanting to win our grand prize, which I don't even know if I mentioned, it's $10,000 for the first place prize. The facility last hosted an event like this in 2018. Then, like most businesses, they were forced to close their doors in 2020 due to the pandemic. Organizers celebrated the return of the tournament with 75 games taking place over three days. When you create a tournament, these people come afar. They don't want to get play a couple games and get knocked out. They want to have fun, but they also want to have an opportunity, many opportunities to stay in it. So that's why there's so many games. That's why we did a division set up a certain way. So they're gonna go home and say, we played a lot of bocce. Among the sponsors who helped make this tournament possible was Oakland County. Several representatives of the county attended the opening ceremony. First of all, we are in this incredible facility, an international bocce tournament to be able to take place for people all over Oakland County to celebrate. It is being talked about around the globe. This is an opportunity, I mean, to promote tourism, to promote, I mean, support our local businesses, and as well as like, support this incredible sport. It means that Oakland County is on the map. I mean, we have the best bocce players from 10 countries around the world coming to Orion Township in Oakland County for this tournament. And we're getting exposure all over the world for all the great things that we have, including Palazzo de Bacci. So excited. This area really needs this kind of an event. We're very grateful to Commissioner Ginjal for making this happen. And Commissioner Woodward and the whole Board of Commissioners. A very exciting time. Over the next several days, the teams competed in the round-robin style tournament, with each team playing every team in a doubles round and two singles. Six teams qualified to advance to the quarterfinals on Saturday. Austria, Canada, Chile, Italy, San Marino, and the United States, with four teams reaching the semifinals. After a day of fierce competition, it was Team Italy, made up of Emiliano Benedetti and Alfonso Nani, and Team San Marino, made up of Jacopo Frizzoni and Enrico Dallolmo, facing off in the finals. In the doubles round, Italy jumped out to a 3-0 lead early on, but San Marino came back to tie it at six apiece. The teams were tied at 12 late, but San Marino moved out to a 14-12 lead. Italy had a chance to steal a point, but a bad bounce gave San Marino the point and the win. Moving on to the singles round, San Marino needed only one win to claim the tournament. With both singles taking place simultaneously on neighboring courts, Italy's Emiliano Benedetti shut out Enrico Dallomo 15-0. The tournament would come down to the battle between Alfonso Nani and Jacopo Frizzoni. San Marino got on the board first, but Italy would jump out to a 5-1 lead. Frizzoni came back to tie it at 5 each, then took an 8-5 lead before Nani began his comeback. With Italy regaining a 14-10 lead, let's take a look at the final moment. So if he can make it with this point, he's in great shape to possibly win this game and match and final. Looks like a good ball from this angle, it looks like a fantastic ball. Yes. Wow, what a ball. And it's not Bertaglio, so he has to declare. He has can only shoot one thing, so he has called the Polino. Here it is. If he misses, it's game. Or if the Polino goes into a weird spot, it's game. So, uh, here he goes. He shoots.
He missed. It's game. Italy comes back. A fantastic game against San Marino. 15-10. Couldn't ask for better matches here. San Marino wins the very first game of the doubles, and Italy comes back winning two in a row. And with that, Italy claimed the title at the 2022 tournament as well as the $10,000 grand prize. San Marino finished second, earning a $6,000 payday. Team USA finished third and Chile fourth, netting $2,000 each. And Canada and Austria finished fifth and sixth, respectively, earning $1,000 each. You can view the exciting action on YouTube. Visit palazzodebacci.com for the link. In Orient Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. The Lake Orient Lions Club hosts fundraisers throughout the year to help make the community a better place. Recently, representatives of the Lions Club made a donation to help our neighbors to the north. On the morning of Wednesday, July 13th, Lake Orient's Lions Club Secretary Jim Leach visited Northern Wholesale Flooring to present a check for $6,900 to Matt Pfeiffer and North Oakland Strong. Over the past six months, the nonprofit organization has been supporting the students and families affected by the tragic shooting that took place at Oxford High School on November 30th of 2021. Leach told us the Lions Club was moved to act in the immediate aftermath of this senseless tragedy. I just thought we really needed to do something. I mean, Oxford is like our, our neighbor, our brother, and we just, I wanted to be able to get out there and help. I knew. Be, you know, people like Matt and, and were already on the ground doing what needed to be done right away. And I just saw the money coming in and everything. And it's, I knew there was going to be something down the road that they probably need. And I also knew that reaching out to the, dist the district would take a little bit. So I was really happy to, to, to talk to Matt and see that there was an ongoing need that, you know, six months later, we're still able to make this type of a presentation and know that it's going to be well spent and people will be taken well care of. Well, motivation basically came out of uh, the needs that arose uh, on uh, November 30th after the tragedy in Oxford and uh, quite frankly just showed up at a meeting uh, the next day after talking to people that day um, and people started connecting and we started going to work just fill fulfilling whatever needs arose and uh, because it was became such a big operation between uh, you know uh, northern basically becoming a logistics center we had goods being shipped in from across the country to um, feed families to to, um, to support all the meetings that were being held at the time and and uh, support all the work at the legacy center where a lot of people were congregating a lot of the children um, we uh, we just ramped up and, and the need just kept growing um, in terms of building um, you know the support for all of the uh, the memorials for for food and for for um, and for the groups to get together. So we fed, uh, I think in that period, over 15,000 meals. Um, uh, on top of that, there were snacks, drinks, uh, art supplies, um, clothing, because a lot of the kids ran out of the school without coats and hats. And so we, uh, the community ramped up and it was, um, it was incredible in here. It was kind of uh, um, incredibly uh, inspiring to see how many people, um, when they saw the need, uh, came together. And, if you would like to donate to the organization, you can make a check out payable to North Oakland Strong and drop it off at Chase Bank in Oxford or at Northern Wholesale Flooring located on Indian Wood near M24. The, the biggest need, we have just did a community survey. We worked with NLCC to create a survey, got a lot of feedback from the community. The biggest need that we see going forward is mental health support. Uh, people who don't have coverage, people who don't have access because there's a shortage of access for, at this point. And so our mission is to um, provide funding where necessary. Uh, we do some group therapy sessions and, um, and then when families have shortfalls, uh, they don't have coverage. We want uh, to continue to support that. And from what we've learned from uh, these kinds of tragedies across the country and from other people that have been involved in response, um, from Columbine up to you know Sandy Hook to different things, we met with these groups and um, they said just be prepared. The mental health needs are going to be ongoing and they're going to grow as you get further from it um, before, they, before they go down. And so uh, that's our mission is to make sure that we can still help the families and uh, make sure that anybody who needs mental health uh, help out of this tragedy is supported um, and uh, we'll continue to do that as long as we can. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. 
Thanks for watching.